the last video we wrapped up getting the whole front end done, but it was obviously way too soft of a setup. That was pretty cool, right? <laughs> so I picked up new stiffer springs and now I basically got to take apart the whole front end and then swap new springs onto the coilovers. As of right now, this is what I have done. So I got the, the right side out. Don't need to show it on video because I've already showed it so many times. Okay, so I got this coilover out. And then I'm gonna put that nice eye box spring right in there. I hope I can turn, oh shit, I can't turn it. I didn't realize how difficult taking out the preload with the spring not in the car was gonna be. Oh, well, that's fun. I'm not even supposed to be working in these pants. Sock is slipping off. Oh yeah, just after this. Oh, there we go. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Damn, I know some girls that would be good at this, but I, I'm not. Oh my God. Freaking four hour workout. Woo! God, I'm on a quarantine over here. No gym, but I can get the workout over here. Okay, there we go. So now I'm gonna take off the little cap over here. There we go. This right here is the main spring. This is the little dual springy perch thing. And then this I believe is the tender spring. Factory the way these razors come in a lot of off-road setups in general, is they have a main spring, then they have like the secondary spring over here, which I believe is called the tender spring, but feel free to correct me in the comments. And this way you can run two different spring rates. So you can run a, I believe, uh, this one is softer than the main spring. So that way you get like, kind of like a plush comfort, and then also have a really stiff spring rate for jumps and such. Yeah, that is my understanding of it. <laughs> But don't quote me on it since I'm not super into off-road stuff. Now for the sake of simplicity, I got new iBox spring. And I did so by just measuring the inner diameter over here and getting another inner diameter spring that'll fit. So for some reason, these are only two inch uh, shocks, I believe, yet they're running a three inch ID spring. So kind of crazy how big of a spring that they run. And just straight off of memory, the main spring on a razor on the front, I believe is around 280 pounds. So the new springs that I got, they have a spring rate of 600 pounds. So basically this new replacement string is about twice as stiff as the old spring. So hopefully it should hold up to the weight of the Miata. Also a side note for anybody else who's interested in doing this, they also have notes on all the springs online so you can see the compressed length as well as the extended length. So, so this right here, fully compressed, has about the same amount of travel as what this coilover will be able to provide. So it's kind of bordering between bottoming out the coilover and getting a coil bind. And the reason that that was necessary is because I had to get a pretty short spring since this spring is actually smaller in width on the outside than the new one. So if I were to get like an 18 inch version of this spring, which is what I had originally bought, um, the spring actually can't fit in between this gap between the reservoir and the coilover. So what I had to do was get the, a small, smaller length spring that sits right about down here. So that way it actually has uh, room to sit and not hit the reservoir and still have all the travel that I need. More or less, that's all the boring information for you guys. So now I can pretty much just slap these on. Yay. There we go. And if you look right there, you can see what I'm saying about the spring being too big to fit in between that reservoir and the body. Slap that one there. And repeat it on the other side, you know what I'm saying? Well, I just finished swapping the springs. <laughs> oh my God, my back hurts. Bro, getting old. Anyways, ta-da. <laughs> Got this side, nice. And that side, nice. So. <laughs> Moment of truth, right? Gotta slap this thing on the ground. That is what I'm talking about, dude. Yes. Oh, yes, dude.
this might be a little bit too stiff, but it does sit up exactly where I wanted it to sit up in the first place, which is at this right here. Yeah. So you could definitely tell that the valving is off because it's super bouncy because that valving is definitely not made for this type of a spring. But of course I gotta play around and see what is gonna be the ideal spring setup. So this is a 600 pound spring rate. Maybe the ideal setup is more around like 400 or 500 rather than 600. Then it'll squat a little bit more, right? But then again, it's leaning back right now. So once we put it up, put some uh, bash bar up here, put two people in it, it's of course gonna squat down, right? So it's gonna be more weight than what it has right now. Woo! That's right, buddy. Oh, yeah. Imagine that with 30s on it. Oh my God, the alignment is so cocked. <gasps> Shit. <laughs> Woo! But I mean, it's basically like fully upright, so it makes sense that it has positive camber right now. So it should squat a little bit, and then, you know, camber would be relatively nice. So, oh well. Now that I got the front end to where I want it to sit with the new springs in, there's only two more things left to do before we can take it for a test drive. So the first one is gonna be putting new brake pads up front, since the current ones are really small, and then bleeding the brakes, and the second one is gonna be putting hood pins in, because there's nothing holding the hood down. That's it. Two more things and we're good to go. Now as you can see, the reason I'm replacing them is because these things are super thin. So of course I got the finest brake pads money could buy, which is uh, basically the cheapest pads I could find at AutoZone. Also this is a 97 Miata, which is a 1.8, but it looks like it actually has 1.6 brakes on there because 97 Miata pads won't fit, only like, you know, 92. Like all the 1.6 brake pads will fit, but not 1.8 brakes. So that, that's kind of interesting. So the way I do pads is some disc brake quiet, put it on here, brake lube, Click, 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 click. Wow, look at that, torque to spec and all. Okay, so <laughs> brake pads are on both sides, that's all good. Now I gotta bleed the brakes because of course I disconnected that whole brake line. So, gotta add a fluid, bleed the whole car, which honestly, which honestly I don't really feel like showing since it's gonna be a tedious process. So I'll just update you guys once the brakes, 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 brakes are bled. Jesus. Brakes are now bled. So, last thing, we gotta put uh, hip pins in this baby. So, one thing that you can note, I think this might be from the hockey puck motor mounts, I'm not really sure, but the engine is sitting up and hitting the hood over here, so I'm actually just gonna cut a little uh, space in the hood right here, so that way the engine or whatever is hitting doesn't hit anymore. Now I wanna put some hood pins in, and I wanna put a hood pin right there, so it goes like bam, and bam right in that corner as well. So, two things, and then the hood should be mounted. <laughs> should is the key word though. So, ta-da. Also, I had a lot of people comment that I mounted the radiator too low when I did the little tube front over here. I don't know if you could see that, but that's where the radiator cap sits. Like, it's pretty much as high as I could possibly get it without having to cut the hood or make the radiator stick out of the hood. This is basically stock position or a little bit higher than stock. Anyways, now onto the hood pins. This video is brought to you by Haviland Smart Change. I know you're probably asking, hello, Mr. Offbeat. What is Haviland Smart Change? Well, let me tell you. Haviland Smart Change is the same great Haviland oil on the inside, but this time in a more eco-friendly container that uses 70% less plastic. Haviland has done this by using a cardboard box that then has a plastic bag on the inside filled with oil. Inside this box, we're gonna get six quarts of oil rather than our traditional five quarts, so 20% more oil, yet still at a low, low price of $19.97. This product is also very easy to use, and that is because it features a fast and glug-free pour in order to reduce spillage in your engine bay. It also features a cutout right here where you can check the oil level inside the container. If you guys are interested in the Haviland Smart Change, it is available at Walmart as well as walmart.com. Full synthetic is only $19.97 for six quarts and Walmart also provides free store pickup as well as free two-day shipping. So whether it's drifting, off-roading, or daily driving, Haviland has you covered. Of course, you know me being B, nothing but the finest for this car, so uh, for hood pins. I've got these uh, super sick uh, Spectre ones from AutoZone. I believe they're $9.99. So 
All right, look at this. Look at this. Ooh, per just, just, <laughs> just ignore, just ignore this hole. All right, all right. I, I did it the first time, perfect. <laughs> See, you know, all you gotta do is just, bam, installed it first try. Of course, nothing better to attach that than some uh, self tappers. Am I right? I uh, say so I tighten the stud in place, cut a piece of heater hose to sit there, it's kind of like a cushion. And, uh, bam. No jiggly boys. And there we have it. We got one over here, one over here. Definitely not even because you know these things are a little bit wonky, but uh, uh, it's not going anywhere now. Oh, 10 out of 10. And just put a bash bar, some lights, boom, boom. So I know I said it was basically ready to go, but uh, I remember the DM where one guy was saying that this point right here, even on stock Miatas, I guess, will sometimes snap off on the subframe, right? So uh, apparently they sell plates to reinforce it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut some right now and then weld them in place just because I kind of don't want to go on the first test drive and then just immediately snap that off, you know? <laughs> it's gonna go and get welded in right there. Yay. There we have it. Those uh, suspension points are now uh, reinforced, so I just gotta paint them, and uh, that's it. They're good. Now I'm actually pretty confident taking it for a test drive because before I was actually pretty concerned that that was gonna break off, like first thing. Test drive. That thing looks pretty cool with just the front end. Imagine if the rear end is done too. And on top of that, putting 30s, right? These are, these are small, small wheels. Okay, so I wanted to do a test drive video. The car's not really registered or anything right now. I think it's planned on up. And it's like quarantine right now. So I know for sure if I take this thing out, I'm most likely gonna get pulled over, right? And the back end's not even done. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna go around the business park the shop is in. And uh, you know, we have like the, the channels for the water drainage, like that one right there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit all the dips and everything like that kind of fast and then just see what the suspension is doing and I'll uh, consider that a pretty good uh, test drive for the front end at least. And then once we get the back end done and I can take the cargo, get it smogged and everything because it still has all the stock emissions equipment, I'll put some plates on it, has headlights, you know, then at that point I can take it out and take it for a real uh, street drive. Also, I slapped on a neon Api Garage shift knob, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so bright. And I also found a lug nut that fits right there. M12 by 1.5 is a thread pitch, so boom, steering wheel's on. TRD replica wheel for this Miata. Uh, this is how it feels in the car, by the way. It's like super high, if you can't tell. The hockey puck motor mounts really make this thing vibrate a lot, by the way. Long travel, bro. That's why, I, that's why I built it. So that was about the extent of the test drive we get to, and I realized I couldn't really be going plowing through the the business park because obviously that'd be like a, a danger to everybody else that is over here. So <laughs> yeah, I guess this is our initial test drive. We know that the whole front end didn't snap off. We know that the brakes work. We know that it turns. It actually drives fairly well and it holds its weight. So it managed to accomplish all that. Now we just gotta see if it's gonna be able to do like a six foot jump, right? And just drop dead on straight ground. So, finish up on the rear end, 
button up the rest of the car, and then uh, go for the actual drive of off-roading it, right? But it actually drives. So that wraps up this video. I will see you guys in the next one. If you like to stay updated on everything, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. And then of course, follow me on Instagram, offbeat underscore garage. So I pretty much show all the updates in real time and little posts here and there about the car um, in between all the video stuff. And of course, check out offbeatgarage.com for uh, some goodies and merchandise. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Vroom, vroom, get out me car.